us maybe are. Uh, a lot of that labor is making us feel closer to liberation, even though we're kind of feeling that weight of capitalism like crushing us lower and lower. So it's like it's nice to feel like more empowered and more liberated in our ability to identify and express ourselves. Next slide. Um, so I just want to say um, I think there's maybe an opportunity to uh, pay back some of this labor as well, uh, both uh, through the work that we're doing here, but also financially. And uh, think about where your money is going. And you, know, you all pay money to the person who makes your pizza, uh, who like you pay rent, you pay your utility bills. So like that's actually just paying people who are fighting for immigration. Um, and really make sure you're like thinking about that when you think about how can you also contribute to the lives of the people who are doing this work. Uh, other questions? Oh. So what is this hacking thing that we need? 13 of 10. Uh, so this is a definition by Bell Hooks. Uh, patriarchy is a political social system that insists that males are inherently dominating, superior to everything everyone deemed weak, especially females, and endowed with the right to dominate and rule over the weak and to maintain that dominance through various forms of psychological terrorism and violence. Uh, that still kind of has like some of the binary sort of uh, gender as biological language in it, but um, yeah, I think it's a good definition. Put in a lot of labor and fighting maturity. So all men are benefiting from the system of patriarchy, but we're also oppressed by it. Um, but we're never going to achieve that liberation alone. We're not going to like feel like fully liberated uh, in a system of patriarchy. And the reason we're here is we need to have a movement that is led by those who are most impacted by patriarchy. Uh, and that's really what's going to liberate us: is uh, movements of self-determination that oppress people. Um, another thing about psychological terrorism and violence that may not seem super uh, evident to us all the time, uh, we may not see like how our actions impact other people. So you know when people say a misogynist joke uh, or they call like, people honey or sweetie or things like that, um, it may not seem like a big deal to us necessarily, and like uh, a lot of men will be like, oh, just get over it. But really, that has like a huge impact on people when. Uh, it's like a constant thing that is happening all the time. Um, obviously, like a lot of us here may have related intentions a lot of the time. We're not like malicious in like what we do uh, that may oppress people, but that's not always what matters. Is the impact that really makes a big difference. Next slide. Um, so just kind of going to go over like some <coughs> of the definitions, and I'm not like always the best at defining these terms myself because I'm not. Living in the patriarchy, I'm not. Uh, yeah, I, I guess I'm, I don't experience it in the same way. This is just my understanding from uh, people who have put in a lot of labor into me over the years. Um, so, cisgender, that is uh, someone who identifies uh, their gender as what they were assigned at birth by a uh, doctor based on their genitalia. Um, trans is kind of uh, the idea that you don't identify with that cisgender, whether it's uh, you identify with something that's on the opposite end of the gender boundary, which I'll get for a little second, or you identify something uh, as something in between or outside of that. Uh, and so there's a lot of uh, amazing things coming out of the movement for trans liberation that is really helping all of us uh, in the way of the as well. Um, queer to me, I'm a queer cis man, I'm mostly cis man, and uh, I, to me, queer is like a very political sort of like state of being. Um, you've seen the acronym uh, LGBTQIA, and uh, to me, queer encompasses all that, but also it's an act of political resistance to heteronormativity and the gender binary. Um, so the gender binary is the idea that there are two genders, and that's it. So there's a man and a woman, and there's nothing else in between or outside of that, or beyond that, or whatever. I heard someone recently describe gender as a three-dimensional shape that you can never like charge for or whatever. Kind of um, mansplaining, uh, hopefully I don't do that in this presentation, although I probably will. Um, uh, it's explaining something to someone, especially uh, femmes, uh, as a man, like something that they already know because you just assume, like, oh, I have this knowledge. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's mansplaining. Privilege. Privilege is uh, something that uh, we have because of our identity, because of uh, patriarchy or white supremacy or ableism or any of these different things that allow us to navigate through the world much more easily. Um, I find <coughs> privilege described as something that allows us to move uh, more fluidly through the world. Uh, like, it's like a kind of a, uh, what's the word, uh, tailwind. 
tokens. So you're like, if you're like biking down the street and you have a tailwind, it's like so easy, uh, or you may not notice that there's a tailwind, but then if you're biking the opposite direction, it's actually looking for <laughs> Next slide. Um, so a manarchist or a virtualist, um, there's some examples of manarchists uh, up there, um, especially uh, like Jesus. <laughs> so that's someone who is like kind of like a lefty sort of person, I think. Maybe a lot of us in this room fit that description. I know myself, I definitely fit that description sometimes. Uh, or I guess just in general. Uh, where you have like some sort of leftist analysis, but you're not actually like practicing it and like this into the patriarchy. Uh, and like you're like taking up too much space or uh, taking actions that are impacting others because of your uh, male privilege. Um, paternalism or saviorism uh, that is kind of also goes hand in hand with like the man of the socialist sort of thing where uh, you are taking upon yourself to be a savior to someone else who really like you just need to step back and let them like, fight for their own version of themselves. So we have a slideshow. Um, consent, yeah. consent is a very important thing. Uh, we all should be practicing more. Um, I guess I can, but you it's on his computer. Uh, that is okay. always like asking people for I can't really like do it right now. Touch them okay. to engage with them. Otherwise I'd stop the thing. <laughs> It's clear that most people in our society don't even know what sexual harassment means. So I'm going to tell you how to recognize it in my situation and in everyday life, in the deep hope that our sisters and queer and trans siblings might have a chance in this world. I'm going to tell you what I've learned from living on this earth for over 30 years. So listen up, because these voices are the voices of your sisters your daughters, your friends, your mothers, and your grandmothers. Men don't get to decide what sexual harassment is, and women white people get to decide what racism is. Because patriarchy and racism are systems of power. Men and white people profit from those systems of power, even if they don't know they're perpetuating them. 
That's why they don't get to decide how to define that. Sure, our system is designed to keep women oppressed. But using freedom of speech as your excuse to say vile things to women makes you a coward. And it's also sexual harassment. Going beyond any woman's boundaries is sexual harassment. Getting your friends to bully her, harass her, stalk her because she won't respond to you in a consenting way, that's sexual harassment. Commenting on how a woman looks when you don't know her, and she's not your partner, and you don't have her consent, sexual harassment. Wolf whistling, catcalling, and eve teasing, that's sexual harassment. Crass jokes and innuendos, sexual harassment. If you wouldn't say it at the workplace, it's sexual harassment. And if you're not at work and say it, it's still sexual harassment. If she says no when you ask her on a date, that means no. If you continue to ask her, that's sexual harassment. If you ask a woman out and she says no, and you keep contacting her, emailing her, following her online, calling her, that is stalking and it's sexual harassment. If you say something to a woman and she doesn't like it, and you still say it, that's sexual harassment. If you say something to a woman and she tells you you're sexually harassing her, and then you go find her email and email her multiple times and ask her to go to lunch with you, that's called stalking, and it's sexual harassment. If you have to use mental acrobatics to justify abusive behavior, like saying that was just a bad joke or a bad joke, that is sexual harassment. If you have to make a long-winded explanation about how your harmless joke was not sexual harassment, it's sexual harassment. If you wouldn't say to your daughter or mother, it's sexual harassment. There are some men who would say it to their daughter. That's called grooming. If you see that, reach out to the daughter and ask if she's okay. It is likely her father is abusive and that he's teaching her that rape culture is okay. Lying about what really happened in a sexual harassment case, like saying that she started it or asked for it or wanted it, is rape culture. Saying that boys will be boys is rape culture. Believing that men are not capable of controlling ourselves is rape culture. Saying that a woman defending herself against sexual harassment makes you uncomfortable is rape culture. If it's not consent culture, it's rape culture. Thinking that a woman should just shrug off being sexually harassed because it's not what women normally go through, or it's not what they used to go through in the past, that is rape culture. Threatening a woman with rape or violence because she dared to speak up about sexual harassment is rape culture and sexual violence. Calling a woman crazy when she screams about sexual harassment, that's rape culture, that's patriarchy. No woman is obligated to make you feel comfortable after she's been sexually harassed. Thinking with the man who has power is more likely to be telling the truth than the woman who has no power. He's patriarch. No, you don't have the right to expect women to be nice to you. Expecting all women to be nice to you is patriarchy. When you see a woman subjected to sexual violence, Rosanna has been subjected to sexual violence in the form of sexual harassment, cyberstalking, slander, hate messages, rape threats, death threats, and you don't do anything to help her or to stop it, that's rape culture, that's patriarchy, and you're enabling it. Notice how I only brought men to give this message? That's because you're patriarchal, and you won't listen any other way. If you're a man, use your privilege to educate others about patriarchy, but always be humble before the voices of those who are oppressed. You follow their lead. If you're a woman, a queer or transgender person, and or a person of color, know that the way you are abused is not your fault. You didn't do anything to deserve it. You were simply born into a body that patriarchy despises. You were born into a body that is objectified and commodified so that those in power can keep their power. So we will bring this system down by refusing to be quiet. We will refuse to be quiet about sexual harassment, assault, rape, and violence. Together with our male allies, we will defeat this oppression. That's how we will smash patriarchy. And that's not rhetoric. I'm going to tell you all about it.
the video uh, online as well on the men's assembly page, but uh, also you'll kind of see like a lot of the things that were going on uh, online that are still going on. There's millions of people sharing these videos that are threatening her, that are cyber stalking her, and uh, I just like be prepared. You kind of see a lot of really fucked up shit. Uh, when you see the like, you know, the common videos on YouTube, uh, and that's uh, part three of a four-part series that I recommend for everyone watching. So, uh, I guess with that, um, we'll move on. Um, so, patriarchy is a really difficult component of our society. It's not just something that is like uh, something afflicting our society. It is like what our society is built on. Um, so. Uh, if you ever think about like the conquistadors or a lot of the colonizers, um, that was men who were driving uh, a lot of that. Uh, and that goes from conquistadors to slavers to the present day colonizers, the oil field workers in North Dakota or those from extracting resources around the world. Um, that's led to a massive amount of rape and murder of African and Native women, both here in the U.S. and around the world, not just in our history, but also like, present to this day. Um, people who live near the man camps of uh, fossil fuel uh, extractions, uh, they are much more likely to go missing to be raped, to be murdered, um, and they're not prosecuted for it. Uh, the witch burning in Europe uh, and the Americas was also used to extinguish uh, indigenous European culture, so like people of European heritage also have been uh, impacted by uh, patriarchy and colonization. Uh, and the presence of the founding fathers, uh, they were considered to be these upstanding people and everything like that, but you know, they were rapists. Uh, they were colonizers, they had mistresses, not uh, people who they were to abuse. Um, the Constitution also kept women from having human rights. Uh, the Iroquois Great Law of Peace was a great example of indigenous people on this continent uh, actually having something that was like really effective in like guaranteeing rights for women and uh, having a more matriarchal society and uh, instead of deciding not to give women the right to vote. Uh, and then in the military, eight in ten women in the military are sexually assaulted, and then a lot of the people from the military uh, go on to be police officers, and you know that the police itself is uh, institution descended from slave patrols, um, and they're twice as likely to commit domestic violence uh, as the general population. Uh, on top of that, they refuse to investigate sexual assault. Um, there's a reason most women don't feel comfortable going to the police. It's because the police are a role in enabling that abuse. And just look at all the untested rape kits across the country as well, um, including here in Portland. Uh, the police don't care. They're macho dudes who just like, don't give a fuck about uh, fighting patriarchy. So um, something that Sarma has like, talked a lot about uh, that I've um, really like been grasping and like, an understanding as well, it's how we as men are also oppressed by patriarchy. And this is not like, oh, poor men, like, look at how, like, shitty we have it or anything like that. This is like just another reason why we should uh, really uh, support movements that are fighting for the liberation of everyone. Um, so how are men oppressed uh, by patriarchy in our society? And like, what does it mean to be a man? So this is adapted from a person named Kevin's next slides. Uh, I'm grateful to them, I don't know if they're here right now or not. Um, but uh, being a man is conditional. We're never man enough. We have to prove our manhood constantly. And we can't be different from other men. We gotta like, blend in. Um, and oftentimes that causes feelings of insecurity, confusion, isolation, or having to put on a show. Uh, being a man means lacking feeling, because feeling is feminine, only emotions available to us are anger, annoyance, rage, or humor. That also causes the expression of feelings, numbness, not being aware of how our actions impact others or ourselves. Uh, it like, creates emotional literacy and disconnection from our bodies and body awareness. Being a man means being over-responsible, responsibility of men to take care of family, make money, control their children and their partners, 
take charge of things, be a leader. Um, that causes constant worry and exhaustion. It causes abusing others, and it doesn't leave us in the space for reflection. Uh, being a man also means competition, means winning. Uh, every human interaction can become a contest, and losing causes us shame. Um, that means that vulnerability is costly and painful. We develop emotional armor, we avoid emotional intimacy with other men. Uh, being a man means we're valued for productivity, it means we're performing tasks, feats of strength, making money, achievements, that's all ways for us to be valued, especially in our capitalist system. It means we don't get any rest, we plan compulsively, and we live a performative lifestyle, uh, kind of going along with the emotional armor sort of thing. Being a man also means being violent and anticipating violence, especially from other men. We're taught rough, violent games, like you all play like war games and stuff when you're a kid. I know that's something that a lot of my boyfriends like would play. Uh, there's value in strength, uh, we're too tough to be hurt. It also leads to militarization in our society and colonialism. Uh, it also means we lack trusting of others, uh, we rationalize preemptive assaults on others, uh, or military, um, and that also leads to a higher risk of suicide among men. Uh, being a man means being homophobic, because closest, you know, closeness with other men is only for big men, uh, who are not actually fully men in our society. Uh, we lose the ability to love ourselves um, and be like comfortable and we love our own bodies. Uh, we're distant from other men. We turn to women for comfort instead of other men. Uh, being a man also means being heteronormative, so sex with cis women is the only avenue for human intimacy or for comfort. <coughs> At least the objectification of women means that sex is used to demonstrate masculinity to ourselves and to others. That leads to scorekeeping rather than actual intimacy with people. It leads to desperation for sex, manipulation or abuse to get sex, and it also leads to rape. Men who are oppressed by patriarchy also internalize this oppression and then go on to oppress others uh, through who people are deemed less worthy under our patriarchal system. So an example that I got that was really opened my eyes is, uh, you know, I grew up as like a geek in like the nerd world and stuff. And so that was a big response to not being masculine enough for being the jock culture, which is like, you know, the, it's like jock culture is the what men are taught to be. Um, but then, they're the ones who are leading a lot of these like, cyberbullying attacks, who are harassing women, who are uh, kind of these new like, alt-right people. Um, if you all have ever been on 4chan or Reddit, I think you can see a lot of toxic masculinity that goes on there. And a lot of that comes from internalizing the oppression of the patriarchy. <coughs> so, um, this is kind of just a list, and again, this is informed by my own uh, privileges and everything like that, but this is like, maybe some steps going forward uh, for how we can engage uh, not just with uh, femmes, but also with other men in our communities, uh, in our organizing or in our workspaces. Um, so let people speak for themselves, speak to your own experience. Uh, trying to do that myself in this presentation, although I'm sure I fucked up on that. Um, patriarchy wants to keep men from finding their own unique voice and uh, wants us to kind of just pair up what other people say or speak what other people say as our own uh, as our own thoughts. Um, I've heard pro procreation was a word I've heard from an article someone posted on the event page. Uh, so that is procreation is repeating what someone else said as if it's your own idea. Um, confront oppressive behavior every single time you see it. Um, the more you benefit from certain privileges, the more important it is for you to have patience and feel discomfort in explaining to someone why they should behave differently. If you share certain privileges, maybe you can actually reach those people by speaking to your shared experience. So like, talk to your bros about patriarchy. Um, no dude is a perfect feminist, I definitely am not. Uh, we all need to be open to listening, be accountable, and adapt without getting discouraged. Um, if you get called out on your shit, or if you fuck up, like, it, the more important thing is that you reflect on it, you listen, you try and change those behaviors, and like, Keep working at it. Like, don't get discouraged. Like, it's this is too important of a fight to like back down. Um, but just keep listening. Uh, control or rage. Oh, sorry. Control or rage. Um, I see this a lot of protests where like dudes get like really amped up and like pissed off if someone like confronts them or whatever. Like, if a car hops at them the wrong way or something like that. And let's like 
Talk that down a little bit. Um, there's definitely like time for righteous anger and stuff like that, but also like let's let the folks who are most likely to experience the repression and violence set the tone and then back them up. Use gender neutral pronouns like they in reference to anyone before you t they tell you their pronouns. Create a culture of asking people for their pronouns when meeting others or meeting spaces. Also, don't assume anyone's sexuality is better. Leave space in conversation and in meetings. Don't repeat what others say. So, like, I like to use the up to rule sort of jazz hands from Occupy because that's a great way to, like, say you agree without getting on stack and then saying the same thing. Um, use reflective listening. Engage people besides men in group conversations. Uh, I've definitely been in moments where like a dude has cornered me and is like talking at me. There's a bunch of other people in the conversation and I'm like trying to like get better at like shifting that conversation to be like, hey, what do you think, person who is not being spoken to right now, uh, but is still an equal part of this conversation? Um, ask for consent before touching people. Uh, like I said, invisible trauma means people react differently. Uh, and that kind of goes along with the general sense of entitlement uh, men have to other people's bodies. Uh, so just be like, hey, is it okay if I touch you? Like even just like like hugs or like tapping people on the shoulder or stuff like that, just like try and use your word instead. Um, do the dirty work, which is obviously like not actually the dirty work because it's the really important thing that allows big, awesome things like strikes to happen. So make food for meetings, uh, make food for other organizers, make food for your community, do logistics support, do childcare or other care work, take notes at a meeting, taking notes is a great thing you can do. Um, I think I maybe like shifted that around in the middle. Okay, so ask for consent. And then also, finally, be more vulnerable and intimate with your new friends. Don't always go to women or non binary folks in your life when you need to talk about your feelings. Um, so one thing that some of these my community have been doing is like meeting together uh, every new move, which is like tonight, I believe. Um, and just like hanging out and talking about our feelings, talking about what kind of shit we're going through in our lives because stuff sucks. Stuff is really bad. It's 2017. We need to process that stuff. And we don't just need to go to like families or non-binary folks to like do that. We can do that with each other as well. Um, yeah, and just Reminding you all again, be sure to pay the people who are fighting for our liberation and who have been putting all this education to us uh, for their labor and make sure that that is something you're factoring into your budget. Like, be like, okay, I got this much for rent, got this much for bills, got this much for paying the people for my liberation. Seems like actually something that is like, pretty important. So, um, yeah, and I don't know what you're about that stuff more, but that is all I have. Um, thank you all for listening. And fun. Black, 
Um, also, somebody is part of the Invisible uh, Disabilities Committee. Yeah. 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 Hi, my name is Emily Prado. I am a uh, Chicana feminist, uh, first generation. I use she, her pronouns. I'm Lana, it's she, her pronouns, and I am a femme queer. Hi, I'm Sarah. <laughs> I use she, her pronouns, and I am a white female. <laughs>
can go
and then the next slide will be our comments. Before we go on to the next slide, we're gonna let you know, like, oh, when we heard that presentation, this is a piece of information that was missing. <laughs> and we're gonna have um, basically 30 seconds for each facilitator, or I'm sorry, each panelist to talk. And some of you have asked if we're gonna have a Q&A. So instead of having a Q&A for the panelist, um, for the panel, we're gonna have breakout groups. And the panelists will be coming around to answer questions in those breakout groups, and that's where you will have like six minutes of time with fellow men or men aligned folks to process, and that is where you can ask questions. Um, are you ready? So, do you want to start us off by talking about why we don't like the word liberty? Would anyone like to? Okay. Well, this one's like pretty. So when I hear PDX Men's Assembly for Collective Liberation, um, I don't feel like that's about dismantling the patriarchy to protect women and femmes. I feel like it's, it's not about what really needs to happen, which is accountability. Like, if men want to dismantle the patriarchy, they need to be accountable which is why we have a proposed new name. Um, we can get the next slide. So the new name is Men uh, Assembly for Collective Accountability, um, because you know who really needs liberation? Us. So. All right, so as we're going into this, we wanted to put some accountability principles. So to learn and grow and hold yourself accountable, or hold yourself accountable to these principles. Be transparent, communicate, don't blame, take responsibility for yourself and your actions, and acknowledge your missteps. I just real quick, I want to ask if um, everyone knows what those words mean, and specifically transparency is kind of a new Thing that we're using in like um, progressive vernacular. Any questions or something like a definition? I have no idea what it means. Cool. <laughs> um, so transparency just basically means just being honest and upfront and open. Like, you know, don't try to hide behind like analogies or metaphors. Just be upfront. Say what you mean and say it with intent. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Cool. Okay. So then don't blame, take responsibility, and then it's okay to be quiet and reflect. Um, I would say in my experience dealing with masculine-centered folks, they tend to process out loud a lot. And I think that a lot of the time people don't realize the impact that that has on women and femmes who are socialized to like, think, oh my god, you're processing something? I'm not doing anything. And like, that's not fair to us. So be sure to give yourself time to be like, okay, I'm just gonna, and like, process this alone and not demand anyone's labor. There will be space to process. Um, <laughs> sure, uh, listen and acknowledge an oppressed person's point of view, give their voices a priority. Most of the time men are socialized to take up space to say what they want to say, and women are um, socialized to keep themselves small. Um, they're not really invited into the conversation. So um, usually their experiences aren't shared, they're not invited to the table, and that makes a lot of our experiences, um, we have felt experiences invalidated. And I'm going to piggyback off that for a second too, um, where it says believe their experiences. A lot of times, if you're recounting like a story of a time that someone was sexist to you or racist to you, people are quick to be like, did that really happen though? Or like, are you, are you just misinterpreting things? Um, your job is to just listen and believe that it happened because it wasn't you there. And number five, I put no man's corruptions or man's planning. Can someone explain to me what, no, don't explain to me, <laughs> tell me what man's corruption is. You all do it. So. <laughs> Anybody? Uh, no. Right, and um, there was a study that 
came out that in meetings, men tend to interrupt women more, um, and women are interrupted a lot. Um, and I think we went over the mansplaining. Does anybody want to read on six? Go ahead. <laughs> um, so number six, embrace discomfort. Um, says you will feel a lot of different things when you mess up or notice someone else's toxic behavior or when someone is being outright horrible. Acknowledge that because that's where you can educate yourself along the way. And um, you know, also to reiterate that it's okay to say something wrong or problematic or something that's gonna hurt someone's feelings. What's important is like what you take after that and what you learn. Like, are you gonna listen and be able to sit with self-critique and then grow from it, or are you just gonna internalize it and be like, oh well, those guys are mean or whatever. So you guys could literally have like five days to put this together. So um, the other one was slow down. Um, you're gonna make mistakes. It's how you react to them that counts. Don't hide your mistakes. Um, own up, apologize, and ask how you can do it better, and then move on. was, um, you know, I get that, like, the misogyny, transphobia, racism seems more apparent um, to maybe men who weren't paying enough attention or it didn't strike them as hard, but honestly, it's literally been there all the time. Like, this is something that, um, as women, women of color, trans women, trans people, um, this is something that we have literally lived through our entire lives. Um, and while it's good to acknowledge it, and I appreciate that, I, I feel like a lot of these tend to be centered more around men's experience rather than the actual experience of women and people of color. Uh, one of the things that stood out for me was the use of the material conditions for people of color. Um, I think that there should be placed a lot more value on emotional uh, implications as well. And because we live in a capitalist society, material goods are what are valued most, but that shouldn't be the case. And that shouldn't be the re primary reason that you're using to take notice. Um, so two things, the starters to hold in two seven, uh, 2017 thing, it kind of justifies stuff that happened in the past because it was in the past, which is just is not true at all. And to also reiterate this really, excuse my language, fucking horrible idea that this wasn't important until now white men are trying to notice because this reality is always been very real. Life in the world has always been dangerous for like women of color. Um, so I'm glad that you guys just are not only getting to see it, but this is our life. This is like how we like, learned how to exist. And we'll go over the word appropriation. It's not that you repeat it from another person, you repeat it from a woman. Right, I, I really want to reiterate that like people are using Trump as an excuse. Um, and like women of color, I'm just 